live press conference yesterday. Uh, kind of to, I think the gist of it is he talked a little bit about the infrastructure funds we're getting for mass transit. And then it was like a financial advisor. Basically, don't spend your money, guys, on luxury items or feel good buying. You can watch the press conference. Uh, it's yeah. The link is on our on our Facebook page. Right, yeah. Um, and, of course, there's a bunch of stories on KUM.com about it. But I wanted to play this because there was a little back and forth in this. Um, as Senator Frank Blas Jr. had uh, written the congressman uh, and also tried to call him about eligibility requirements for the Small Business Administration's Economic uh, Impact Disaster Loan uh, Program. And uh, so we're going to play. We're going to start with this clip from the congressman where a reporter had asked him, was there a solution uh, to kind of shoring up the, the areas where Guam businesses are not eligible? So uh, the first question was, is there a solution to this issue at hand? You know, you know we really need to be mindful of, of, of what, we're, what we are actually viewing as problems. And um, you know, if we're going to cannibalize low-income areas uh, for non-low-income areas, you know, that's a policy decision that the Congress will have to weigh. But I, I can tell you right now that, you know, the reason why the legislation passed the way it did was because that was the mindset of the Congress that we wanted to focus those resources into the low income areas. And that's why the legislation passed the way it did. So as, as for classifying it as a problem, it's not necessarily one because we got the relief passed. We were able to get it for a certain segment of the community. And that that's a win. You know, we, 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 we need to really view the wins that we're able to score as the wins that we're able to receive. And the, the, the fact that this is being um, uh, applied fairly across the whole country uh, in this manner, Guam isn't being mistreated in any way. And um, trying to make that change legislatively, um, if, if that language was already being considered in the original drafts, and that was the compromise language that was finally passed in the package, then that's the circumstances that we're dealing with today. Right before that, a reporter had asked uh, Congressman Sir Nicholas for his uh, response to uh, the letter and media reports of Senator Frank Bloss Jr. Well, you know, Senator Bloss's uh, letter, and I, I saw his comment on um, on the story, and uh, you know that was a very ignorant statement on behalf of Senator Bloss. Um, first of all, the relief packages that were passed they they are passed uh, at large for the whole country. Um, and so, uh, for example, with the, um, the EIP, the Economic Impact Payments, uh, the original language was intended to be able to fund that for everybody, uh, but in the course of the legislation and the compromises that needed to be made, um, cutoffs were put in place for high income earners. Um, and so um, the Congress needed to move forward a package to be able to, to get the relief passed. And the appetite in the Congress was to, of course, move relief forward, um, but, but, every, but there were certain um, uh, senators, particularly in the Senate, who wanted to make sure that there were, that the um, uh, relief was being more narrowed for areas that were of, of greater need. And so what was passed for the um, economic um, disaster loans, the EIDL that uh, Senator Blas is uh, uh, referring to, um, that, that additional relief was programmed specifically for um, areas that were identified in the U.S. Census as being low-income areas. And so uh, the reason the CNMI did not uh, have the, the same limitations we do is not because anyone was asleep at the wheel. I think Senator Blas needs to wake up and realize that. Um, the reason that um, the CNMI did not have those limitations was because the CNMI in the 2010 Census had a poverty rate of 52%, while Guam in the 2010 census had a poverty rate of, I'm sorry, the CNMI had a poverty rate of 52%, and Guam had a poverty rate of 22%. And so this census application of the EIDL is across the country. Um, the, uh, the, the problem that he's uh, trying to, to, uh, to create and the implications that he's trying to make about our office not doing his job is very, very incorrect because this, the exact same circumstances are found all across the country. Um, you walk down the street in Florida or uh, Mississippi or um, Massachusetts and you'll see the exact same thing. Uh, areas that are not designated low income did not qualify for the next round of EIDL relief. But those areas that were classified as low income in the U.S. Census um, were able to receive that relief. And so it was just the way that the package was created. Um, but uh, <laughs> the, uh, the implication 
uh, from Senator Blas that somehow we were asleep at the wheel, I think just speaks to his ignorance. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the implication uh, from Senator Blas that somehow we were asleep at the wheel, I think just speaks to his ignorance. Oof. Thank well, you. Tell Frank. us what you really think. <laughs> Man, Senator Blas, oh, what did you do to them again? I just asked the question and I was just seeking for answers and seeing, find, trying to find ways to be able to help to, uh, if this is in fact an issue or problem, um, what can I do to help? Uh, what can we do together so that we can resolve this? Um, <laughs> and um, I, I guess that struck an iron um, with uh, Mr. Sinicholas. Uh, but that said, is is uh, you know, if, if you if you listen to to his response uh, in in the press conference in his you know the press conference that he called, um, and or if you, what he had said in an earlier you know earlier conversation that he had on another radio station, um, he didn't answer the questions, um, and I would have appreciated if in his response. Uh, and what he provided in the in the conference and in the conversation that there was some response to the concerns that I brought up in behalf of many of the businesses that now are stuck in a dilemma, you know, are, are stuck in a quagmire because what I, you know the the funding that they could have received, albeit grant and albeit for for, for no more than ten thousand um, dollars, you know, there's no answers uh, and. Does that affect their their ability to um, to you know to 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 apply for the the, the enhanced uh, uh, economic injury disaster loan? So those questions still need to be answered. I don't think there was ignorance in me asking the questions. I think the ignorance is in not being able to inform the community that this is a this has. Uh, how it has been passed by Congress and heads up because some of some of you aren't going to be getting it uh, to compare you know our, our, our the, the streets that we have on Guam to to, to Florida and, and to California is you know th there is no comparison uh, you know Florida and California um, they're not geographically challenged like we are you know, they're not surrounded by bodies of water with closest area that can provide us aids, you know, thousands of miles away. And please, please convince me that Hotel Row and Barragata Heights are low income areas. Uh, to say that this was passed, the, 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 uh, the grant uh, is eligible for those individuals that are, you know, are in low income areas. Obviously, it was a you know, even a, a 2010 census, but let's go back to 2010. What's what? The, the hotel room was still there, was there already there. You know, uh, Barragat Heights was there. Please tell me as well that Babula is a high income area. Or that Batulo Road in Dedido is a high income area. So, so to use that as the excuse uh, for you know, these areas not being eligible, uh, you know, for, for this grant aid, and then not being able to provide them the heads up. Again, you know, oh, first off, good morning, Chris and Bree and Jason. Yeah, hey, good morning. <laughs> you, <laughs> right on. <laughs> um, uh, it's, it, it, you know, there's, there's still a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I would have appreciated if, you know, uh, getting past all of that is, is that he provides the, the answers or some guidance, if you will. He apparently, he, you know, in, in the first part of his press conference, he gave us all guidance on how we sp should spend our money. But now, give us some guidance as to how we're going to get past. I'm not able to get the grant, but the guy across the street from me is. Right. Senator, so, I wanted to, to go back to uh, your comment, uh, which apparently struck a chord with the congressman about being asleep at the wheel, right? Um, and it, he said a lot of things in his response that I kind of latched onto where he was basically saying that, you know, this is just how it is. This, it is what it is. And that, you know, they're using this 10 year old census data and that this, 
Um, it was interesting to me because as a territory, you would maybe kind of expect, I, I would anyway, that your wh whatever the representative is for any territory would say, hey, hold on a second because we're using 10-year-old census data. There's been a whole ass pandemic since 2010, and this data does not reflect the economic situation that my constituents are in, right? Um, no, did well, you, did first, you think that yeah, well, that, well, that should have been done? I, 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 yeah, I never said he was asleep at the wheel. What I said was the CNMI, obviously the CNMI wasn't asleep at the wheel. Mm. But I never said anything about it. Secondly, you're right. Nobody is going to fault him. And everybody, I think, on Guam would probably thank him for saying, hold on a bit, you know, uh, this, this methodology that's going to be used um, doesn't fit for Guam. Okay, so that he, he says, you know what, he's the lone voice, there's 420 other uh, members of Congress, it may not be heard, I mean, it may not be acted upon, but will it be, you know, but, but let it be heard. Because anybody who is very familiar with Guam and looks at this map and sees how this map is laid out, okay, can cause the question, wait a minute, you know, okay, so granted this is 2010 census data, that's another point that we can argue. However, a lot of these areas that this map points out as being low income or economically distressed areas are in fact not, not that at all, okay? If you look at the median, the median income uh, for the people that, that live in, in those areas, it, it, it probably doesn't, Again, please tell me that hotel row is, is low income. And please tell me that Babulo is high income. Please tell me that Barragada Heights is low income and the village of Talapofu is, or the village of Talapofu, you know, is higher, has a higher income than that. I'm, I might get, my, get myself in trouble and as far as characterizing everything, but, you know, common sense will tell you if you look at this map that the way this map or, or the information provided in this map and the, the the methodology or the reason why this map was going to be used, um, you know, so that you can separate this out, it just doesn't match. It doesn't match. And, 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 and really to say that we should take this as a win, we should, we should, we should appreciate for what we got. Tell that to the mom and pop store. Tell that to oven store in Barabara. You know, tell that to the to 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 the stores or to, to the shops that you know the, the, the repair shops that are on Pippinel Road. Tell that to them. Tell that tell them that you know, despite that everybody got affected by this pandemic, um, based on a 2010 census data, it's got nothing to do with 2020 or 2021, because the last time I checked, everybody was affected. Tell them that we should you know suck it up. You may not, you didn't get it. Some other people did. It's, it's a win. Let's move forward. Senator, um, really? yeah. Uh, so, I mean, and then when he we was asked about the solution, he basically like said, suck it up, call it a win. It is what it is. But moving forward with this 600 million, if, if, if our small businesses, some of them are being left behind because of the eligibility requirements, for the SBA EIDL, are you planning on introducing any other type of measure, aid measure, that it maybe close some of those gaps? Well, well, obviously, I'm still going to try to get some of this information. It's necessary so that you know, I, I know, you know, what was the reasoning, the rationale behind this, and you know, what are those alternatives? What are those things that can be done? I, you know, I, I'm I'm already drafting a letter to to. Uh, Small Business Administration, you know, uh, asking them for, I guess, some guidance or you know, some clarification, you know, uh, with regards to the to the advanced uh, IDL. I think also, maybe hopefully, to get some answers and whether or not you your business not being eligible for the advanced IDL, uh, IDL, or, or the targeting IDL, that it does not affect their ability to apply for the advanced. Uh, uh, loan uh, or enhanced loan, you know, again, a question that needs to be asked, I mean, uh, uh, answered. Um, so there, there are still 
the other things that I can do. Um, and then one of the options obviously is, is, is drafting legislation um, that would tap into, you know, that, you know, that 661 or $631 million um, that uh, we'll, we'll be receiving. Now, of course, the governor is going to come back and says, you know, I've got no jurisdiction, authority, or purview to be able to do this. But at the end of the day, you know, it's not about what Frank and Frank Boss can do or Lou Leon Girl can do or Max Nexus can do. It's what we need to do together to help these businesses get back on their feet. Um. Speaking of uh, the governor, um, I, I did want to follow up on that letter that you, you wrote her, uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago, uh, regarding uh, PPEs uh -huh. and uh, providing relief to families regarding that and, uh, and Bill 70. Did, did you get any response or do you have any update on that? Oh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, I had a conversation with, with, with the governor. And uh, she she has responded. She she wrote back to me, and she uh, she appreciated that I reached out to her. Um, and um, she likes the program. She wants to see. She's already talking to her to uh, her her you know her office on on ways that it can be it can be done. As I assured her, as I told her, uh, I wrote in the letter, and I assured her when I met with her. She says, "Look, Governor." You know, if, if it can be done already, and there's no ne there's, there's no need for the, for the legislation, I'll drop the legislation. You know, I'll pull it back, uh, and you know, on work with you and being able to provide this. You know, Bree, uh, you know, the, the mask that you, that you and Chris are wearing right now that I can that I can see. You know, um, a little bit over a year ago, uh, that wasn't necessary. In fact, I wasn't even thought of. You know, today I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm see it's, it's designer masks. Um, would ever think that is that's where it's going to come to be today. Uh, this was something the purchasing of the mask, utilization of the mask, purchasing the hand sanitizers, the disinfectants, the air purifiers, everything that we, that we have now within our household or in, 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 in our cars that are that are necessary for us to be able to go on with the functions of our lives are things that many people never budgeted for. Or don't have the budget for it. you know everybody's had to to, to to pay to buy the mask as opposed to the can of spam in, in in some instances okay and with that i felt that if there is a mandate from the government for the community to purchase these things and to wear these things then there should be some kind of recompense there should be some kind of, of assistance um if the if and when the government can provide it, and obviously, you know, with six hundred and sixty one million dollars coming, there is the ability to be able to provide some some financial relief that this be done. And so I again reached out to the governor. She, you know, she wrote back. Uh, we've had, you know, a very good conversation. I, I'm anxious to be to, to work with her on a you know a program or you know, so that we can provide some financial relief to families who've had to make these purchases. Then I'll pull the bed to build that. It's not necessary. Yeah, I just spent 30 bucks on wipes and sprays mm -hmm. last night. Yeah. And then can you imagine, you know, the kids going back to school? Yeah. Yep. You know, you're going to have to purchase the face mask and, and, and whatnot. And, and, you know, and, and, you know, the hand sanitizers. Uh, there's just all sorts of things that we have to purchase today that, if anything, were, were, were not, ne not necessities. And in some cases, luxuries. Over a little over a year ago, but now we need to. Okay? Yep. It's right along with the spam, the milk, and the eggs. Yep, necessities. Yep. Um, Senator, I wanted to bend your ear a little bit about this. Uh, there was a release that went out last night. It was a release, and then it was unreleased <laughs> um, from the Republican Party of uh, Guam. And this is uh, relative to the ethics complaint that was filed against Senator Tello. I don't know if you know, we had her on the show yesterday, and she was basically saying that these attacks are coming from within the Republican Party. Um, but then the Republican Party last night around, what, like 8.30 or 9? Right before 9. Right, right when everyone was getting ready for bed, they put out this release, uh, and it says, the Republican Party of Guam stands unified and fully supports its legislative caucus and denounces the character assassination attempts at play by the Democrats. 
The ethics complaint filed against Senator Tello Tidegui is nothing more than a ploy to discredit our Republican caucus and misdirect the public on the many guilty pleas and ongoing FBI corruption investigations among the President administration. Democratic operatives are merely trying to deflect onto an issue that is presently just an unsubstantiated rumor and a poor attempt at creating the impression of Republican infighting, which couldn't be further from the truth. We strongly deny and decry any attempts to portray this ploy against Senator Tidegui originating from members of the Republican Party. The Democratic Party, Democrat executive and legislative leadership should focus on more pressing issues like paying the RISE Act, reducing the BPT, and figuring out what to do when federal monies dry up instead of continuing to disseminate lies about our Republican leaders in the hopes to create a rift in our party. We deserve better. All of Guam deserves better. Um, but then a couple hours later, the Republican Party of Guam sent another email that said, kindly disregard previous release. <laughs> See, Jules Mossy, what is going on over there at Republican <laughs> Central, Senator? Aye, a day. Well, as embarrassing as it's going to sound, this is the first time I've ever, I, the first time I've heard that. You know, that there was a release and then there was a retraction. And, and, and this first time I've ever heard the contents of it. There hasn't been any discussion about that, in, you know, uh, at, at least with me. Uh, secondly, is I am a member of the Ethics Committee uh, in, in the legislature. And in my responsibility, you know, I'm going to have to basically, you know, for lack of a better term, separate fact from fiction, you know, and, and truth from conjecture. So I would rather that, okay, you know, uh, in, in, in recognizing what my responsibility will be uh, and, and being able to provide you know, fair, impartial, uh, uh, I guess, decision uh, on my part in, in this committee, I, I'm going to have to refrain from being able to make any further comment on that. Okay? You just, <laughs> yeah. you just happen to run across a senator that's part of the committee. That's kind of, I know, because we read out the committee right membership earlier, but I, I didn't know you didn't know. But I mean, okay, just let, let's not talk about the ethics thing against Senator Tello, just like uh, with the Republican Party. Um, so w you guys be in the legislature, is there like consultation that goes on when the, the party leadership comes out with these press releases? Um, because it kind of seems like there there isn't, or was it this just like some kind of wild card? You know, someone got the password to the laptop and shot out a release and then maybe somebody spanked their hand just before midnight. But when they do these releases, do they do they say, hey, Senator Frank, what do you think of this? Is it cool? And you're like, no, why don't you change something? They're here. Or... Well, I would prefer, I, I would prefer some heads up um, in, in this, I, at least a notification that this is, this, that this release or this information is going to be passed on. Recognizing, okay, the Republican Party, you know, the representation of the party is more, is, is more than just the caucus. They're more than just uh, the seven senators that we have uh, in, in the legislature. You know, we got mayors and vice mayors. We've got, you know, uh, national committee men, committee women. We've got village leaders. We got a, a you know, a number of other individuals that, 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 that make up the Republican Party as well. And there are times that there are issues and there are concerns that um, the party would want to make a stance on that are not necessarily in the purview of the legislature itself. Remember, we're a separate batch of government and we, we, we stick stick to the lines and stuff. That said, though, is that uh, um, I know that uh, there has been, you know, there continues to be, obviously, now, you know, with this with the release of this information, um, some work in being able to, to, to work on the lines of communication that should seemingly exist uh, within the party and with, within our organization. Um, that said, too, is, is as senators, individual senators, or as caucus, uh, when we come out with press releases, it's not so much a need to be able to go back to the party to get, quote, unquote, authorization or, right. or approval for this. This is more so that everybody understands, that everybody recognizes that, you know, this this is where we're going and this is what's happening. And... Um, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I, I, after this, I want to call, you know, some, some of the party leaders and say, um, is there something that you wanted to tell us? <laughs> okay. 
because Chris and Sabrina just told me on the link. Yeah. How many times, Chris, have you, have you been the, you know, says, hey, did you hear about this? And I'm like, ah. Uh. Sorry, I, you know. <laughs> I didn't mean to put you on the spot about the whole ethics uh, thing, though. Um, oh, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no words. Again, like I said, I, I, I don't think that there's there was any announcement as to who the committee membership are. I feel that. Right. Uh, I can. I yeah. can. Uh, not totally get it. Part of the, the what about the party, the party leadership, though, uh, Senator? It's It's... Interesting to me because obviously you guys are like the boots on the ground of the party, mm -hmm. right? But then mm -hmm. the party leadership, mm -hmm. like the makeup of it, how much experience do we have uh, in the, that leadership? Well, you know, first off, you know, in, in what you don't see in the background a lot of times is, is, is a lot of the institutional, the old school in, in, institutional uh, uh, savvy individuals. That, that 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 are there okay they don't necessarily are the ones that you see as 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 the party leadership right um so so i have in in my own you know per, personal capacity and, and otherwise been able to reach back to a lot sometimes a lot of these 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 leaders in the community these village leaders and these leaders um who have once you know, taken on roles before as former governors and former senators. I mean, that's a wealth of knowledge that, that exists there. And so um, I'm confident that in the leadership, and granted, yes, okay, so we're going through some rough times, but I think this is something that we can get through. Um, you know, with, with uh, now Juan Carlos Benitez uh, as, as the, the chairman, um, I have, you know, I, I have confidence in what he can provide, you know, and Juan Carlos also has is is a nexus, uh, uh, you know, to to the party organization nationally. Yeah. Um, you know that is, has helped uh, tremendously. Um, you know, not just in the formulation of, of legislation, but basically to to get the pulse of the beat of what we what we should be able to expect, uh, you know, down the road. As a matter of fact, let's go back to one of the initial reasons why, you know, we're having this conversation. I intend to, to, to go back to, you know, the party leadership or, or, or to the Republican National Committee and say, hey, OK, guys, uh, you know, do you have any suggestions? How can we, you know, how can we resolve this um, and reach, reach back to them? Um, if given the opportunity, I'll do the same thing with the Democratic Party. Uh, but but that said, it's going back to, to, to our party leadership. Um, you know, there, there are some very capable individuals, and there are individuals, again, that I'm in the background that you don't see, yeah. that, uh, that that also help contribute to helping to build uh, to build the party that we have. No, I, I see. I completely understand, because it's kind of like that I'm here. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but, you know, you mentioned Juan Carlos, so you, are you going to be talking to Juan Carlos, and maybe Juan Carlos can talk to uh, the congressman? About this whole, you know, you are yeah. ignorant. Um, His buddies are the <laughs> congressman. You should, you yeah. should put in a word like, "Hey, Juan, and, check your boy." And I have. Oh. I have been. In, I have talked to Juan Carlos. You know, again, you know, brief. You know, what you see, what I provided in the letters is basically, you know, some of the things that I've already started that that, that I've done. Now I'm moving forward on other things. You know, the the, the conversation was okay. Are you going to introduce legislation? There are, there, there are many other you know, things that I can do. Again, it's, you know, I'd, I'd love for Mike to return my call. Yeah. Can you okay, just say that, Senator? So, so you wrote the letter, but this was after you had made numerous attempts to contact him via his office? Yes. Or? Yes, I called his office, you know, um, left a message. Uh, I was, you know, I was th thankful, you know, that, that, that uh, it was... Uh, it was within the day that uh, I got a call back from from one of his staffers, and uh, asked that uh, you know the message be sent for please for for the congressman to give me a call so that uh, we can talk about some issues uh, that uh, have brought been brought to light, uh, with, with, you know, to me. And uh, but so, not receiving the phone call, things need to get done. Yeah. And what? One of at least one of the concerns that I had uh, that I wanted to speak to the congressman about to the, to, to Mr. Nicholas about I I detailed in the letter you know 
Were there other things that I that I wanted to talk to him about? Sure, but it, in this specific case, that was I was I need to talk to him about that. So what he did didn't call me, and I so I decided to write to them. So what did you think though when you were watching the press conference <laughs> and they asked him that question and he just like went off on you? Let me ask you something with the media. You, are you guys going to give me the same opportunity? Uh, when I want to retort back that I can call you guys just in a, a moment's room and say, I'm going to have a press conference and you, you can all be there. Well, this is your yeah. opportunity here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay? Right. But, but yeah. It's, 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 uh, I know. Um, it didn't have to go that far. It didn't have to get to that. Had there been a conversation, had there been a return phone call, um, or you know, or call me right after the letter and says, hey, people, what's this? Okay. I would have appreciated it. Says, hey, you know, I mean, well, okay, let's discuss what's in that letter. But, but, you know, to resort to saying I should wake up and that I'm ignorant. No. Okay. I don't think there's no, there, 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 again, there's no ignorance in trying to find the information so that it can help these businesses, help them, help them to get back on their feet. I think the ignorance is occurs when we don't we, we fail to provide that vital piece of information that oh heads up guys sorry this is how congress passed this is how the law was passed and so therefore uh, we're not going to be eligible it does not start from a letter from frank ross it is it shouldn't have they should have been able to say look while i'm in congress while we're sitting in the halls this these were the things that were being discussed so this is the things that we need to prepare for. He's done it before. Why can't he do it again? And, and why not for him? Good point, Senator. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll get back with you after he hears this and then he does his little clap back. And then... <laughs> yeah, and you know, again, I'm willing. Okay. So, I know. Oh, oh, all right. We, we had our fist to cough. Okay. You know, now let's move forward and let's, let's see how, how, how we can help, uh, um, you know, our people. You know, at the end of the day, you know, if, if the, the delegate can, can find the solution and help to find the solution or the governor can do this, they can have the ribbon cutting in and then they don't have to invite me. It doesn't matter. I need to be invited to that. Just let's get this done. Thank you, Senator. Appreciate your time this morning. Well, thank you very much. All okay. right. Thank you, guys. All right. And, we'll see you. and so, and hopefully, Brie, going back to your thing, hopefully that sometime within the next few weeks, you know, we'll be able to find some financial relief for all the face masks and hand sanitizers that you bought. Let me know, because I'm going to go buy <laughs> a lot you. now if we're going to get reimbursed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, guys. Okay, all Senator. Right. Uh, 951. Senator Frank Laws Jr. Good talk there. That was fun. Yeah. He's... He, he did get a call. He just got a call out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <ooh. laughs> what well, was just crazy? You know, yeah. you know, we were, we were listening watching to the it. press conference. Yeah. And when he said that, we both were like, wait, what? So Brie and I <laughs> sit across from each other and it was like playing. And I was like, oh, this is that Frank Laws thing. And then I was like, but I called it. I told Brie, I was like, he is going to call out Blas and he's going to be so offended by whatever mm-hmm. uh, Blas had put in the letter. True to form, yep. It was like, da 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 it's just his ignorance. And I was like, ooh, we were both kind of like, oh. <laughs> and I was like, dude, he just wrote a letter. Yeah. Like, wow. And then it, then it was like, so what was the solution? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like the solution is there's no solution. 